всякое время у порога в кабинет жужжащее так зло заболевает. Завравшись и зарвавшись, застывает безмозглой мухой, влипшей в лингит. Анубис дремлет. Наконец, шаги и твердые, и робкий стук, и скрип тяжелой двери. Здравствуйте, голубчик, садитесь. Зверь листает манускрипт. А посетитель, немощный старик, бледнеет, разглядев его получше, сидит в шатах. Чудовище, посредник страны заболевает. Ну, и жалкий, но грязный, тущий, как стыд. everyone hope you're all having a wonderful day today today we're going to be talking about a very very cool rifle this is a model a 1940 Mosin Nagant that is uh, tastefully upgraded in a few different ways now before anyone gets mad in the comment section this is not my rifle this is actually my brother's rifle he's owned this for a long time he has a couple of these guys or at least had a couple of these guys back in the day these rifles were like 90 to like 150 bucks so these were basically garbage rifles i know now they're going for anywhere from like 500 dollars to a thousand dollars but back when my brother bought this they were basically junk rifles and people were doing all sorts of terrible things to them before we get started with everything else though if you'd like to support the channel in any way you can of course like share and subscribe because all that is free you can also check out the first link in the description which is my steel targets uh, i should be getting more in stock right now i only have one size in it's stock like but there'll be more coming soon and then i also have a subscribe star which is basically just a pro to a patreon so basically a uh, monthly subscription service that you get extra content and I uh, send me a little money as well. So, as I mentioned, this is a 1940 model Mosin Nagant. Uh, this is a carbine edition, so this is a short barrel, short for the time. The standard version had something like a 28 inch barrel and this one here comes with a 18 inch barrel. So a very short carbine of the time back when this was originally developed. Uh, we will go over just a few things. This isn't going to be something like Forgotten Weapons or somebody who has a lot more knowledge about these sort of things. Mine is a very, very minimalistic view of the actual rifle itself. We're going to talk about the upgrades and some other stuff that has been done to this rifle and if it's even a good rifle here in 2021. Now, it is chambered in 7.62x54R, which is of course a rimmed cartridge, which is the longest serving military cartridge. It's very, very potent uh, with great loadings from a bunch of different companies. You can also, if you're hand loading it, you can get a ton of performance out of the cartridge. It is bigger than your standard 308 case, so you have a little bit more case volume. Uh, so you can do a lot of cool things with it with bullet weights anywhere from like 150 to like 220 grains. So again, a lot of variation there. Uh, what I shot this with, I shot five different loadings through it. Some Red Army Standard, which was kind of the baseline, 154 grain, all the way up to 200 grain soft point ammunition from Wolf. And then we also shot some PPU match, which was 170 no, 182 grains, and then also saw, shot some silver bear and some brown bear ammunition with fairly middling results. But let's go ahead and talk about it. So 18 to 19 inch barrel, I'm not sure what it actually measures at, but it's somewhere in that range. We do have iron sights, uh, very similar to like AK style iron sights where the rear sight post 
is in front of the chamber. Uh, the difference here though is that uh, of course with the mount that we have on here from Rock Solid Industries for the scope that you see on here, you, the iron sights are completely unusable. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start with the front of the barrel. What we have here is actually a front sight sleeve. It is actually a sleeve that is pressed onto the barrel, so it's not actually part of the barrel, which probably throws off the harmonics a little bit, but it doesn't really affect accuracy all that much, which we'll talk about in just a second. The barrel is a fairly standard profile barrel. It's more of a middleweight profile. It's not a true lightweight profile or really a heavy bar barrel, but there is enough meat here to uh, to give it a lot of rigidity and to actually be fairly accurate. Now, back in the day, a lot of people would say that their Mosins were one MOA accurate. If you did a bunch of different accurizing things to them and they were laser beams and they were just the most accurate rifle on the market and people really, really defended the rifle. Uh, most of the time, we did accuracy testing with five different loads and most of what we found was around two MOA with fairly cheap ammunition, the Red Army Standard 154 grain, grain FMJ shot right at two inches with a five round group, but the PPU match ammunition, the 182 grain uh, FMJ, that did shoot one MOA. So five shots at right at one inch, slightly over one inch at 100 yards, very, very excellent uh, accuracy out of a 80 year old barrel. And again, not a heavy, not a bull barrel, anything like that. Alrighty, so here's our first five round groups. We took two shots to get it zeroed and then just locked it in with the Monstrum 6 to 24. Uh, we were using 148 grain FMJ 762x54R by Red Army Standard. I pulled this round, 100% uh, this low round here is my fault. So you can see our zero is probably slightly off to the right, like a half inch. But even with that, this group is about mm, inch and three quarters, two inches, somewhere in that at 100 yards with uh, just regular ball ammo out of this old bows in the gun. Man, that's a great five round group. So right there, there is a pretty excellent five round group. Now you might think, John, you have a flyer right here, but this was from a zeroing round in a earlier one, and you'll be able to see that in round. So this is the actual five round group. This is two shots in the identical hole. You can barely just tell that this was my first two shots. Be able to see it on camera. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, center to center man, maybe just over an inch. This is with, um, 182 grain match line from PPU. This stuff is uh, like 30 grains heavier and I would say flying faster. This stuff kicks like a mule. That Red Army Standard stuff was very, very soft. This stuff, this is hot ammo. One MOA out of an 80 year old Nagant, I'll take that. So it is capable of very, very good accuracy. This is, uh, in this current configuration, it's kind of like a hunting rifle uh, and that sort of thing. Like I said, 7.62 by 54R is a great cartridge for a plethora of things. Um, one thing I would say uh, about this barrel is there were certain ammunitions that it did not like at all. So the Wolf 200 grain, the soft point ammunition, at 50 yards, it put up a group of about four inches. So I wasn't really interested in wasting more time and ammo actually testing it. So I went ahead and just shot it. It did hit like a truck and actually split one of my target stands in half, uh, not by hitting the target stand, just by hitting the steel target that it was attached to it snapped the two by four and a half. Uh, so again, a lot of power and certain cartridges have a lot more energy than other. Uh, the 200 grain did not shoot well. It wasn't keyholing, so it wasn't destabilized out of the barrel twist, uh, but it just was not accurate whatsoever. So it was about an eight MOA round. I was on target for both of those. What I was aiming right at it. Uh, sometimes at 100 yards, I would be aiming dead center of the target. I would pull the trigger and I would miss. And this target is 11 and a half by uh, 20. So a 
pretty large man size target at 100 yards and if I wasn't perfectly dead center sometimes I would miss the target because it would go high right or straight right or down low or something like that but very very inaccurate with certain loads it seems to like anything from 150 to 180 grains uh, and 182 which with the uh, FMJ the match load from PPU is probably the top end of what it will comfortably stabilize I know that there are heavier loads out there but this rifle with this specific barrel with this is of course the carbine barrel which is a little bit shorter than the other barrels that are out there does not like the super heavy stuff everything else except for the PPU shot right at 2M away, which is perfect. 2M away is great accuracy for plinking. Uh, we did take this out to 420 yards uh, without much success, but when we dialed it back to 300 yards with most ammunitions, we were able to just plink on target all day on a 11 and a half by 20 target. And then we also shot it at a seven by 12 inch mini me target, which has a three inch head box, which is a 1M away target at uh, 300 yards. And we did some shooting at that and we were able to get a couple hits on that So it's not a true precision rifle for very very small targets or stuff like that But with most loads uh, inside of 300 yards very very accurate uh, Able to hit whatever sort of steel targets or animals that you're aiming at no problem So for hunting all that sort of other applications, uh, it's not a super heavy gun We'll talk about the rear end some of the action and stuff in just a second But the barrel profile on it is very very good for hunting or target or anything like that as long as it's not super super precise so moving back into the action uh, there is not one part of the action that has not been polished or worked on by either my brother or by professionals so if you'll notice this is not a standard bolt knob so this is actually a offset bolt knob that reduces the uh, lift on it so normally you have a straight bolt that of course when you open will interfere with your scope. So you either need a forward mounted scope like they had uh, back in the 1940s when these were used or something else to get some sort of optic on there besides just the iron sights. So what they did was they cut the bolt handle off and they have this special one, this really nice one also from Rock Solid Industries that has been uh, welded on and then made it on and it looks really, really good. The machining quality on it is very, very good. Uh, and so that you can mount any scope that you want on there basically. This is a very big scope. This is the Monstrum Tactical 6 to 24 that they sent out. I already did a review on it. Very, very good. It's holding up really, really well. Uh, on top of that, not only is the bolt knob, again, very, very nice, but it's an incredibly smooth action for being 80 years old. It's a lot better than a lot of uh, modern production rifle actions, and especially the unlock is just very, very smooth. There is a little bit of slop in the bolt when you get it all the way to the back because it is a fairly long action. 7.62 by 54R is a long case. But uh, I had no problems running it as fast as I could. The bolt, again, has been touched, polished, all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, very, very good. So the action on it is great very smooth another thing i do want to say is that the ejection on this bolt action rifle is excellent it does have a fixed ejector in here i want to say right there's the fixed ejector and it ejects casings very very far as long as you're even running the bolt with a medium amount of force it will just throw those casings out of the way now I did have issues with one specific load, and I'm not sure if it was the load or how I was running it or something, but with the Silver Bear 174 grain FMJ ammunition, I had three or four failures to fully extract. I'm not sure if I just wasn't running the bolt hard enough. I feel like I was running it pretty hard. You guys can be the judge of that um, in the description. You guys can see, uh, of course, the video of it malfunctioning, but every now and again, I would come up to eject the case, load the next one, and either the case would still be about halfway in the chamber or would have only turned sideways and then get stuck when I go to close the bolt. So there were a few very simple malfunctions like that. Nothing too major though. And it was again, only with one type of ammunition. Other than that, 100% flawless. Uh, so the action on it is the same standard action that it was originally, but it has been touched and polished, and the bolt is, or the bolt handle has, of course, been uh, heavily modified, which is a excellent uh, improvement, in my opinion, so that you can actually fit uh, any sort of modern scope that you want in a more comfortable manner. Now, one thing that I will say about this mount, as I mentioned, this is a rock solid industries mount, uh, same as the bolt knob. So, what you have here. 
uh, is a big hunk of steel on top of your receiver. Uh, it drills down on top of your receiver, two in the front and then one here in the side, if you guys can see this. I'll show close-ups of all the stuff so you guys can see it in detail. The one issue that I do have with it is that it takes your offset to basically what a standard AR-15 offset is. So with most hunting rifles, most modern hunting rifles, you're looking at like a one and a half to two inch offset. This is like 2.6 to three inch offset depending on your rings and all that other sort of fun stuff. I am running, as I said, the Monstrum Tactical G3 6 to 24 first focal plane optic, and I'm also running uh, worn steel rings on it. So these are very, very high quality rings, very strong, no loss of zero, uh, at any point, so even though it is kind of jury rigged on here to the receiver itself, bolted onto the receiver, uh, the mount is very, very strong. It is again, just a hunk of steel. So uh, it does add weight, but again, it gives you that added benefit of being able to run any sort of modern optic that you want on here. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger on here because the trigger is fairly interesting. So the trigger has a lot of creep and doesn't really have a defined wall, but it's not super heavy. And I believe this also has been modified and polished and all that other sort of fun stuff. So uh, you have a lot of creep and it kind of just builds and builds pressure, doesn't really hit a wall, and then it eventually releases. It's very similar to a mil spec AR-15 trigger. Uh, with the one difference that it's lighter by about a pound and a half. So it's probably about four to four and a half pounds. And the downside is though, there's no defined wall. Whereas most AR-15s have a fairly defined wall and then a little bit of creep until it actually breaks. This is basically all creep, but it's not very heavy. So again, you have it building pressure, building pressure, and then you can feel you're about 75% the way there. Then you just pull a little farther and it breaks. And part of the reason for that very, very heavy trigger okay is one just the way that the bolt uh, and all that sort of stuff interacts with the trigger itself, but also because 7.62x54R uh, primers, a lot of them use very, very hard bird and military style primers, that if there was a lighter trigger in there with lighter uh, hammer springs or whatever is going on inside the trigger, again, I'm not an expert on the actual trigger mechanism. You guys can all school me on that in the description down below. Uh, but the reason for that is because those hard primers need to be struck very, very hard. So if you look at pr the uh, the primers, they have been hit extremely hard by, again, a, um, a hammer moving very fast with very powerful springs. So uh, disassembly is incredibly easy. Open up the bolt, pull the trigger, and there is your entire bolt mechanism right here. Now, I have not cleaned this since I've had it. I will clean it before giving it back to my brother. Uh, I've shot a little bit over 100 rounds through it uh, so far. Now he's owned this for years, so I've shot this many times before, but a very, very cool little guy and very, very durable. And again, this has been out for just over eight decades right now, and it still holds its own. Some of the machining quality on the original parts are a little bit rough. Uh, just because of how they are manufactured, manufacturing techniques have improved, become much more efficient, much more streamlined, a lot sleeker and that sort of thing. So a lot of the original material that's still there is a little bit rough in some ways, um, but it kind of gives the whole rifle character. Now, the worst offender of this whole build is the stock to a lot of people. So the stock is just your very basic, I forget the name of it, I will link the name right here so you guys can see the name of this stock that really changes the whole look of it. And it does technically somewhat free float the barrel. So that is part of the reason for the really good accuracy with certain loads. Um, because it is partially free floated, floated unless you touch the front handguard because the handguard is a little wobbly and the barrel does move up and down. So if you put it rested on something and you're pushing, giving it a lot of force, you're going to have it touch the barrel and you're going to lose that free floated quality. So in terms of ergonomics and comfort, I think the stock does add a lot, even if it does take away from the retro aesthetics and the more military style firearms of the time for a modern hunting rifle, again, based on the Mosin Nagat platform. Uh, it does add a lot of benefits by, again, free floating the barrel, giving you a much more comfortable cheek riser that puts you in line with the scope, especially when it's on a riser like this, and a very, very comfy butt pad. 
Now, as I mentioned, 762 by 54R, some chamberings are very soft shooting. The Red Army Standard 154 was very soft, very, very pleasant. And then the, the heavier stuff, the, the hotter ammunition, because sometimes you're getting some ammunitions at like 2,500 FPS, and then sometimes you'll get a much heavier bullet running at about 2,700 FPS, again, depending on the loadings, because 762 uh, by 54R is such a versatile and interesting chamber. So, Depending on the rounds you're shooting, it'll feel like a 243 all the way up to above a 308. So in terms of performance, of course, excellent, but you know, you get, gotta pick the loads that you want. So some loads are more comfy, some loads are a little hotter. So uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is that this gun was originally designed to be fed straight down with stripper clips, so like five round stripper clips, because it does have a five round internal magazine. If you need to dump all five rounds at once, you can just open up the bottom and they will all come out. Um, I generally, because of course we have this big honk and scope in the way you can't load it via stripper clips, so I just single feed into the magazine. You do have a five round magazine, so theoretically you could get five plus one if you're really smart about it. Um, but again, for what for most applications, hunting or anything else like that that you're gonna be doing with it, five rounds is perfectly fine. Uh, it would be cool to have some sort of detachable magazine on it, and, but you would have to do a lot of cutting and welding and then figure out what would work with uh, some sort of stock. So it would take a lot of work, a lot of machining to get that done. But for what it is, uh, very, very cool. Now, if you could get one of these still for anywhere from 100 to 150, maybe even up to like $300 on the high end, I would say that this would be a high value option. But right now, where they're sitting at $500 to $1,000 on the used market, especially for a shorter carbine model, because this is a carbine model, which makes it a lot more handy, again, good for hunting, that sort of thing, um, I definitely would not do that or do any sort of major modifications like this to a to one that costs a lot more. Again, when they're dirt cheap like this, of course, yeah, do whatever you want to it and you know, buy several of them, keep one stock and modify the others and uh, kind of do what you want and kind of make them your own. So in that terms of real world use, I don't have any problems with this using this in a modern day context for hunting or plinking or anything like that. The only thing that I would not want to do is to buy a thousand dollar rifle and then put another five hundred dollars worth of upgrades into it or more to then make it perform like a six to seven hundred dollar bolt action rifle that you could buy stock from the factory. So is this a very cool little rifle? Uh, Absolutely, it's very, very versatile and a very cool chambering that you can still get ammo for today. It's about 50 to 60 cents a round on the low end, depending on what you get, and all the way up to a couple dollars for the high end, really nice match grade ammunition. So uh, that's about it for the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Go ahead and comment everything that I got wrong about the Model 4 1940 Mosin Nagant in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Fire another one just to make sure. Go for it. Now just pull it into your shoulder and then squeeze the trigger. <laughs> that was so awful. Oh, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> up, all the way up. My arm's too short for that. There you go. Hey, good job. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the ammunition for sure. It oh. does smell bad. Okay. It smells like someone just took their shirt off. Hmm? It smells like someone just took their shirt off. I did. Oh. All right, I'm going to shoot a group. Smooth action.